those of you who watched uh, Late Kick back when I was in Columbus, I think I told this story a couple of times, but it always bears repeating. The year, I believe, was 2016, LSU at Auburn. It was a crazy couple of weeks, because the week after that, we would have been in Athens, Georgia, where Tennessee went walk-off. Josh Dobbs, I believe it was, to Juwan Jennings, Butch Jones about tears his ACL celebrating. So a couple of weeks span, I saw that happen. The week before that, you remember how the LSU-Auburn game ended? I'm down in a corner end zone where it looks like LSU on a heave ends up winning the football game. Looks like they just went walk-off touchdown. Then all of a sudden, everyone's eyes go up to the monitor because Auburn's got, like, if you ever watched Monday Night Raw, they had Titantron back in the day. Auburn's got one times like 50. They got a huge video board there. So everyone can see a crystal clear replay. And then they put that clock on there, and you see triple zeros before the ball is snapped. And you've got LSU, they're celebrating. Because, I mean, this is, in some cases, for Les Miles, potentially a career-saving. And for LSU, a season-saving win. And then the replay happens. And then they come back from replay. I can't even hear on the field. It's so loud. And they overturn the call. So I got to see one team celebrate a walk-off win and then heartbreak, devastation. And then on the other side, you see the celebration unfold. It was thought and whispered and rumored going into that game. It was a must win for Les Miles to keep his job. So Les Miles goes from winning the game to losing the game. Now, I knew what was happening behind the scenes with LSU, so I didn't follow Auburn. Normally, I follow the team that wins the game. If I have an interest in a, a vested interest in both, I'll follow the team that wins the game. Well, that night, I hung around the team that lost the game for obvious reasons. So I walk up the tunnel there at Jordan Harris Stadium, really close. You got to go single file. That's about how wide the tunnel is, walking back to the visitor's locker room. And so everyone's walking back up that runway there with their head down. It's dark because the game ended after sundown. And so Joe Oliva, who was the athletic director at the time, did a very poor job at LSU, but he was the athletic director there at the time. He was up the ramp. A number of dignitaries were up the ramp. Uh, Les Miles' wife had been brought down on the field, so she was up the ramp. And so what happens a lot of times, if you've ever hung around after a game long enough, you'll see it. Coaches, they'll go to their press conference, but if you're the road coach, a lot of times you'll come right back out on the field once the stadium's emptied and you'll film your coach's show that gets distributed to local television stations that air it at different points during the week. So Les Miles had to film his coach's show. You are contractually obligated to do that. And I walked back out on the field. I knew he was about to come back down. So he comes back down and there, is, there are these black wrought iron gates, the hedges and wrought iron gates that surround the sidelines of Jordan Hare Stadium. So I just leaned on it. They had his tripod set up there. They were waiting for him to come out. So Les Miles sort of shuffles his feet back out onto the field, and he's standing there as they're getting him mic'd and set up, white balance and focus and everything, and he's just staring off in the distance. And he's, his eyes were as white as my shirt is right now. And his wife was standing way over here, probably about 20 yards away, and she looked physically ill. She was, she was leaned, she was like doubled over on the wrought iron gate, and she couldn't look at him because she knew, and he knew, that Really, he had just lost his job. It had all but been announced. And at that moment, all I could think about was how folks watch professional athletes or professional coaches. And they'll say, when tough times arise, oh, it doesn't matter. I'd love to be in those tough situations if you paid me that many millions of dollars a year. And basically, the insinuation is the human emotion doesn't hit them like it does me. You know, I'm working 40 hours a week and I'm barely making ends meet. But since they make seven figures a year, life is different for them. And I can tell you right now, in that moment, Les Miles' wife, nor Les Miles, could have cared any less how many zeros were going to be in the... Uh, he was about to get a buyout, guys. So uh, how many zeros were going to be the, on the end of his buyout? Because the truth of it is, most coaches live well within their means. They don't have enough time to spend their money anyway. Their wives may, but they don't. They don't live these extravagant lives. They don't really care necessarily about the money. They care about the position. They care about having ascended to the top of the sport. And when someone takes them and tells them, you're no longer good enough to hold one of these positions... Sometimes you'll get back there. More times than not, you won't. So what we were witnessing that night was a guy who was being told that his spot had been taken and possibly, you know, to this day, Les Miles, he's the head coach at Kansas right now, but Kansas is not LSU. Kansas is in the middle of the Big 12 and I pull for Les Miles as much as anyone, but that night, that was tough to watch. And that was something that I looked around 
And I realized no one else was on the field. 